Good morning, once again, Hope Chapel, here and at home. Uh, we really are just so happy to have you worship with us this morning. Uh, let's all stand to our feet and just have a moment of excitement, a moment of expectation as God comes and works in each and every one of us. You know, as I, I always do my best thinking on my ride here in the morning, and I was just thinking how with God, I love that it's, you know, last week we celebrated the resurrection, right? And you think, wow, that's it. That's the best there is. With Jesus, there's always more. Last week, it's just, it's just the beginning. Every day we live in the power of the resurrection, and it keeps getting better and better as we go closer and closer to him. So let's celebrate. Before I turn things over to Patrick, um, we just have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, as always, our, for our visitors, first, second, and third time visitors, we'd like you to text WELCOME to 603-392-7511. That is our text in church, church app, and it will plug you into all of the events that are going on here. Um, and any struggles that people are having, that's where we do our prayer chains and things like that. Um, Next up is that we have children's ministry and nursery care. Um, it's after worship during the sermon up to age 11. So if you need any help, we've got you there. Every Wednesday night we have prayer uh, here starting at 7 p.m. Uh, this April 30th, we are hosting a youth group event, the big group event. Um, we're doing a game night. What exactly that entails, I don't know yet. Uh, but it's starting at 6 p.m. Um, May 8th, this is a new idea. We're doing a kids' fun day from 1 to 4, so first through fifth grade, um, because last year the kids were the ones that suffered a lot. Um, so if you have any questions, please see Nathaniel or Jenna for more information, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot more in the weeks coming up. And the last is, well, second to last, we are starting planning for our summer camp. Foursquare, our denomination just isn't uh, doing what we needed to as far as youth group is concerned, as far as camp's concerned. So we're going to do it ourselves again. Uh, it's for ages 12 through 18, August 8th through the 14th. It's going to be roughly $100. We're still trying to figure out the cost and we're trying to keep it as low as possible. But if you have any interest in uh, sponsoring a kid to help them go to camp and have Girls, did you have fun last year? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Have fun and just grow love Jesus more. Um, just see me, Nathaniel, or Sarah. And the last announcement was a special one um, from Mr. Ward. He did want to warn everybody of a new danger that's hitting the streets. Jacob, our tech director, has now gotten his driver's license. So uh, let's celebrate just a little things in life. And I'm going to turn it over to Pat. Who's going to share with us today? Are you going to be doing fundraisers all over? Yes, but we haven't figured any of that out yet, but we will. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm coming loud and clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So before we start this morning, I just wanted to take a moment of prayer. So Lord, Lord Jesus, just... Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for showing up in our times of need, providing a way when everything seems to be lost. Lord, you're our comforter when things don't seem to go our way. When we try to blame you for things that are in our power. So Lord, we just thank you for going to the cross last Sunday and dying for us and rising three days later. Because Lord, you died for me, you died for everyone in attendance, and you died for everyone watching at home. Because we all matter to you, Lord. And so, Lord, have your way this morning. Let me be a vessel to what you have in store for these people to hear. And allow me just to continue to bless these people of Hope Chapel, Lord. In your name. Amen. Amen. So, we celebrated Easter last, Resurrection Sunday last week. <coughs> And we sung, there ain't no power like the resurrection power this morning. And that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> we just celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ last Sunday. And do you know that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is in you this morning? Yeah. For some of you this morning, you feel defeated. 
You feel like all hope is lost. Let me tell you, that's how the disciples felt right after Jesus died on the cross. But that wasn't the end of the story. And it's not the end of yours either. Jesus rose three days later and overcame death. You too will see victory in your current situation. All hope is not lost because we have a savior that defeated death. You see what Jesus going to the cross and defeating death, he died for our sins and washed us white as snow. Some of you have been holding on to things you did and can't seem to forgive yourself of that shame and guilt. You see, Jesus went to the cross for you and for me. So forgive yourself as Jesus has forgiven you. Feel that power of freedom. Because Jesus has given you that power to be rid of your shame and guilt. You have that freedom to choose to walk in that or allow what has eaten you up inside to hold you back. You can just simply forgive yourself because the Lord's already done it. And then ask the Lord to forgive you. Because a lot of you, I mean, I've done it myself, we make, we make mistakes and we hold on to that so much. Where we're overthinking, we start to overthink, it's like, am I actually good enough to be doing what I'm doing? Or did what I say hurt that person? And do we ask those people for forgiveness? Did we ask the Lord to forgive us for what we've done? You see, each day is a new day in the Lord. Just as he rose on when he went to the cross, we rise every morning with him. And praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. 1 Peter 3, 4. By Jesus going to the cross, he gives us a new birth in him of a living hope that when we choose him, we get to receive this inheritance that doesn't go away. That perfect living hope through all circumstances that we go through, the good, the bad, the ugly, we have that hope to know that those situations, they're not going to last forever. There's going to be joy on the outside of things. There's an inheritance waiting for us on that day where we are no longer here. And we get to spend eternity with him. First Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. You can say you're a Christian all you want. With your talk. And saying that you would do something for that person in that moment. But are your actions matching with what you're saying? The kingdom of God is power, and that power is in you, being the hands and feet of God. It's encouraging people in their time of need. It's coming alongside of them when they've gone through the worst year of their life. It's saying, hey, I can't imagine what pain you're going through, but here's a crying shoulder to lean on. It's helping them through their burdens when they can't face it themselves. It's cooking a meal for a family just to spend time with them. It's inviting them over just so that you can fellowship with them because they, they haven't been in fellowship either. Just so that they know that they matter to you. It's loving on people even though they are hard to love. It's having those difficult conversations with those people that are close to you but doing it in a loving and having grace for them because they need to hear the truth sometimes. I know I do. Let me tell you a story about the power of God moving. It was my second year at Ignite during the summer and I was recruiting for the school. I simply told God that I wanted to feel him, I wanted to feel his power more than ever before. And let me tell you, I was in for the summer of my life. I started going to those camps and I went to Missouri, I went to Ohio twice, and I went to my own camp in Maryland. <laughs> and the first camp I went to was an Ohio camp. And I just simply was there just being a recruiter, and then all of a sudden it was the first night, and the Lord told me, go pray for people. 
And I'm like, but Lord, I don't know these people. What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? I didn't grow up with these people. They don't know me from some random stranger that's trying to get them to come to the school. And the Lord said, go. I'll give you the words. I was like, okay, Lord. And in that moment, I went and prayed for this kid. His name was Jacob. And I started praying for him, and he was telling me about what was going on in his home life. That his sole reason of going to camp was to disengage from what was going on at home and being and wanting to feel close to God like he's never been before. And I was like, okay, well, Lord, I just prayed for me to see your power more than ever before, and this kid wants to experience that. How does that happen? So I'm in this moment, and I'm like, okay, Lord, please don't let Lord, allow me not to mess this up. I'm like, Lord, just give me the right words to say. And I just simply started praying and then encouraging him for just being that boldness to step up and asking for prayer. And all of a sudden, the Lord gave me the right words to say. I told him that his family life would get better. I told him that the Lord had a great plan for his life. I didn't know what that looked like. But I knew if he continued to be grounded and molded into the Lord and mourned as much as he could with spending time with him, asking those questions to his leader, and following after God with his whole heart, that he would be on the right path. And that was night one. And we go throughout these camps, and I'm sitting there, and we're talking about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit that one night. And the same kid came up to me and he goes, I want to experience that. And I was like, okay. So I started praying for him and another leader came over that got helped me along the way. And in that moment, he goes, I need to share, I need to share what I just received with all my friends. And I'm like, okay, who do you have in mind? And he took me all around the different tabernacles. He took me all around to all his friends. And he's laying, he's praying, and he's just being the hands of people of the Lord right then and there. And there was one kid, his best friend, that the service ended, and we were over in the corner over here. And the people who were in charge of the camp was like, we gotta move on with our scheduled things, but you guys can take this outside. There was a group of 20 kids Around with the one kid that I prayed for and leading the pack. He took all his friends outside. He took all of his friends outside, laid hands on this kid, and didn't give up. It took, people were praying, people were singing worship songs, people were prophesying. I never felt the Lord more in my life than in that moment. Because it seems like a Bible story taking place right then and there. And after three hours, after the service of continuing prayer, continuing to believe that the Lord was going to touch this kid, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit touched him. And he started speaking, he started breaking down, he started crying, and all of the guilt and that shame and the pain that he felt was wasted off his shoulders. And you just embrace these kids, he, his best friend just embraced him with a hug. And that simple kid just... Jacob just looked at me and said, is this what it is? Is this feeling the power of the Lord? This saying yes to whatever the Lord has in store for you, even though it might be scary, it might be out of your comfort zone. Is it believing that the Lord's got you in all circumstances? Because he does. When we surrender ourselves and we allow the Lord to move only the way that he can move, Stuff like that happens. The power of the Lord happens. Healings happen. When Christians believe, and even non-Christians, when they ask for prayer, when they believe, and you have that boldness to say, you know what, Lord, have your way. I'll lay my hands on that person, even though I don't know. Because I believe that you will touch that person, you will heal them. You will get them out of their rut. 
You will get them out of their financial situations. Maybe their relationship's in turmoil. Maybe all hope is lost. But guess what? Our Jesus overcame death. Our Lord Jesus Christ overcame death. He is seated on the right hand of God. His, reign, his kingdom reigns forever. So why, in those moments where our hope seems lost, we go and run away? Why don't we be in the hands of feet in God, especially in this time of need? What's going on in this world? It's more divided than ever before. But what are we doing? Are we picking a side just because it's the right thing to do? Or are we being in the hands and feet of God, loving people, and seeing Him, His power, move in us through our love and actions towards other people? Or are we simply saying we can never love that pe person because they disagree with us? That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will have people that, in it, that you might not like. But guess what? God died for you, them, died for you. He died for everybody. He wants everybody in the kingdom of God. And that might be you going up to that friend of yours that is not so much a friend anymore and just point him a seat in the Lord. Just point a seat in that body of his or hers. Because the Lord's going to use you in so many different ways if you just simply say yes to him. And that was just one camp. That was just one camp. I had three other camps to go to. That was just the first camp of the Lord's power being used. I had a kid at another camp during that same time period. Well, that kid, didn't want to be here anymore. He didn't want to be here anymore. And he came up to me and he said, I shouldn't be here right now. I shouldn't be at this camp. I've done some terrible things to my friends, my family. I've gone down the wrong path. I shouldn't even be here right now. But what do you do in those moments? What do you do? You just simply allow God to use you and ask the Lord for that power to step up and just give that guy a hug. And say, you know what? You matter to me. You matter. I'm so glad you're at this camp. The kid told me what was going on in his life. And I won't go into too many details. But let's just say he wasn't in the right state of mind. He wasn't in where he should have been. Night one, I prayed for him. Night two, he went and was game and show. Gain, uh, guilt and shame that he was feeling for all the things that he'd done in the past year. The weight was lifted off of his shoulder. Yeah. It was. Night three. Actually, day three. At that camp, we had water baptisms. The kid jumped in the pool and got water baptized and rose from the dead. He rose. He rose and said, you know what? I had the worst year of my life. But I know the one thing that's been, always been constant in my life, and I need to get back to that. He repented of his sins and rose out of the water and was water baptized. Night four, we're praying for that kid. He just got water baptized. He just rededicated his life to the Lord. Night four, during worship, a mom that was working at the camp went up to him and started praying for him. And I joined in, and three other leaders joined in. And then again, we had to move out of the circuit. We had to move out of the sanctuary. And his best friend and his other friend were right there. And the kid was praying. The kid, his best friend, was praying for him for six years, that he would finally allow the Lord full control of his life. The song that we just said, "I Surrender," that was. The kid's prayer for six years for his best friend that he would surrender to him to surrender to the Lord 
so that the Lord could use him in what he had in store for him, his best friend. Six years of prayer. Some of you have given up on prayers and promises that the Lord has given you because it hasn't worked in your timing. Just like Jesus raised from the dead, he breathes, garden, he breathes graves into gardens. He does. He brings them back to life. Those passions, those desires, those friendships, those people that you've been praying for to come back to the Lord and to follow after him with your whole heart. Prayer works, people. Prayer works. It might not work on your timing, because if it was on your timing, sometimes you wouldn't be able to see the blessing that God's trying to do in you, all around you. Because there's battles that are being taken place right now in the midst of us right in this room that we will never see. There's puzzle pieces getting shifted and moved around in order for us to live our best lives in Christ Jesus. So I'm trying to tell you this morning, for those people that you have been on your heart, they will come back. There is not all hope is lost. Because once they have an encounter with Jesus Christ, Jesus will always bring back. Will always bring back. I could talk about camp experiences this entire time. So I know we just put up that screen not too long ago about sending the youth to camp. Let me tell you, camp, if you're thinking about sponsoring a kid, or you have youth kids that could go to that camp, please try your best to send them. Please, because camp for a youth kid is so impactful because it's a week away with just close-knit friends and family, and it's intentional. The Lord meets these kids at those camps, people. It's happened so many times before. They come back and they're changed. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Jesus will raise you out of your current situation. That too shall pass. That trial or that growing pain or your pruning, or pruning season has been knocking you down. Or those moments where you feel like the Lord's not there. Those too shall pass. The Lord will come. The Lord will come. He will show up. He will show up when you need him the most. He always will. He will never leave you nor forsake you because you matter so much to him. He knows every hair on the top of your head. He knew you from birth, birth and he's never going to give up on you. You will begin to see joy in that and breakthrough because the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is in you as well. You have the same power to overcome and walk in that freedom. Plus, those passions and those prayers that you've given up on. I ask that you take some time this week. Write them down again. Write down those people that mean so much to you. Those situations that seem lost. Those dreams of yours that sometimes you put on hold for other circumstances. I ask that you just take some time this week and just write them down. And say, Lord, these are the desires of my heart. I want what you have for me. Because I know, and I these people mean so much to me, Lord. And I'm praying to the, I'm praying to you again for those people. Because I know that you will bring them back. Are you saying yes to being activated by the Lord? Because once you receive that power of freedom of guilt and shame, 
by not allowing things to steal your joy. The Lord is going to use you in so many ways to bless his kingdom because you have, been, you have become an overcomer. So my challenge this week for you is walk in the power of knowing that just like Jesus rose from the dead, your current situation doesn't define you. Who defines you is Jesus Christ, living inside of you. So go well, people. Listen to them when they talk. Get to know them and know that you too will overcome. And rise stronger than before as you walk in the freedom power that the Lord has for you. Worship team. Well, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God fulfill his work in you and may you see the fruit of your labor. And may you enjoy your life that he's given you. May you be resurrected that even as Jesus Christ was resurrected. Church, it's time to live. It's time to stretch out your arms. It's time to invite your friends. It's time to live and enjoy your moment. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>